Hello fan cubs, it's me T-Bell and I recently just got back from VidCon. It was amazing and I had a lot of fun. I learned so much and I filmed none of it, but that's not the point. I'm here for you to impart my knowledge of the five things I learned from VidCon. In no particular order. Um, number one, fair use is a defense not a safeguard. This is something that came up during the workshop on copyright and fair use. This was a panel that I did not go to, but my friends Foldable Human and RL King did. And they kind of live tweeted or reported back all the information. And this was the biggest nugget. Fair use isn't something you put up beforehand as this safeguard. No, you have to first be accused of copyright infringement, and then you have to prove fair use. Like, the onus is on you. Ideally, it would be like, you have used thing. Oh no, I have transformed thing. Fine. But given the impersonal robotic nature of YouTube's copyright control, this is easier said than done. So the important factor is to change and transform as much as you can while still retaining the original intent in order to form that defense. Number B, it's okay to advertise yourself. As a naturally shy person in crowds, this was rather difficult for me to grasp, but being thrust into social situations does wonders for your ability to adapt. I would just be sitting on my own in a panel and someone would say, hey, you have a channel, tell me about it. Walking down the hallway, in the escalator, hey, who are you, what do you do, what's your handle? Ah! <sighs> and it wouldn't even just be people coming up to me. I would see YouTubers that I watch regularly and then like last year when I had stage fright, I would just go up to them. That's scary. <laughs> Not even that, but this year I gave out my business cards to people I personally made eye contact with. And it was okay. And you're not in trouble for that. That's what VidCon is for. <laughs> my husband printed out pictures of his face to make fans and had his business card on the back. And then he gave them out to random people at the con. It was hilarious. And it worked. And no one is gonna be mad at you because you're advertising yourself. So why not go ahead and do it? Not only is this a convention where you go to fan out and have fun, this is a conference where you go to get better and get your name out there and it's okay. Number purple. Actually, really support each other. This is something I gleaned from the amazing Women in YouTube workshop where we all got into breakout groups and discussed problems with video making and feminism and I got to talk to so many cool people. One subject that kept coming up was our need to really support each other, to not just watch our videos and lurk, but to make comments, contribute discussion, share on social media in a very engaging way. And I find that's not just important for women on YouTube, but for every social circle in which you're involved. Your work friends, your old forum buddies, if you're LGBT, if you're a person of color, if you're a person of faith, engage with the people you support and actually really support them. It makes a difference to that producer, it makes a difference to YouTube, and it makes a difference to people watching it. Number banana. This year I found myself more often going up to YouTubers that I enjoy watching and watch regularly and had a kind of a different approach than last year. Last year I was all stage fright, wanna wait till they're alone, don't wanna interrupt them, don't wanna cut in line. This year I had a new strategy. It was called screw it, witness me. If you're gonna do something, do it in the three seconds you think of it or don't do it at all. The Bible says be bold and courageous when approaching the throne of the Lord. So why can't I just approach other people? And it's a mentality that I could carry with me throughout other places than the meat space. Like if I needed to email a pitch to someone. Screw it, witness me! Or want to set up a collaboration with someone I admire. Screw it, witness me! Or just get up off my butt and get on a video already. Screw it, witness me! The point is to go forward without hesitation before fear has a chance to catch up with you. And while this might not work in every situation, I do think it does in creative circumstances as well as networking. Finally, number Uga Chaga. This is something that kept coming up in panel after panel and producer after producer. Don't be afraid to suck. 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 
Don't be afraid to suck, especially if your last work was your best. This is something I have artistically had a problem with for a while. It's the fear of the blank page. It's the fear that if you do something, it'll never measure up to what you've done before. So what? As long as you're making something, you're still improving. It might not be as innovative as your last opus, but you're still making stuff. You're still making stuff regularly. Sitting around waiting for the next great idea compared to your last is called creative constipation. The only thing that makes those ideas consistently is regular work. And well, looky there, that's just what I'm doing right now. These are my biggest takeaways from VidCon 2015. I do hope they helped. Let me know in the comments that if you did go to VidCon, what your biggest takeaways were. And even if you didn't, what your best creative advice would be. Do not forget to like and subscribe and maybe share me on the interwebs. Don't forget to donate to my Patreon. That way we can get more of these videos out quickly and with better quality. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed, thanks for listening. If not, I look forward to your flames.